Woman, you have a great faith. Let your wish be granted. The only place in the Gospels Jesus uses such a commending, such words of commentation about anybody's faith. The only place. Of course, he commends the faith of the centurion. Nowhere in Israel have I seen faith like this. But here the Lord tells woman, woman, your faith is so great. Great faith. What is so great about this woman's faith? Let us see. Here is a woman, a feisty and a plucky woman, who fights for her sick daughter. And he, she takes on Jesus in that process and makes him change his plans. This woman's indomitable persistence makes the Lord change his plans. What was the Lord's plan? The Lord and his disciples are in a non-Jewish territory in Tyre and Sidon, today's Lebanon. John the Baptist had been killed, and the Lord and his disciples may have gone to this place for some quiet time. And there comes this non-Jewish woman, a foreigner, a heathen, a pagan, a Gentile, with a request, with a prayer. And how does the Lord respond? First with the silence. Note those words. The Lord responds with the silence. Then he responds, explaining to the woman his plan. The Lord wants to stick to his plan. He has a clear plan and he told his disciples, you are not going to do any Gentile areas for preaching. You will go, you go to, first of all, the lost children of Israel. Because Israel is supposed to be a selected nation for the sake of all the nations. Israel will be formed as a holy nation, and that nation will be light to all the nations of the world. So there was a time and a plan. Israel was selected for this purpose. The same with the new Israel, the church, selected to be a light to the nations. That's God's plan. And here is a, a Gentile, a known Jew, coming to the Lord. Would you change that plan? I'm a Gentile. So the Lord tells her very clearly, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is my plan. But the woman would not give up. Then the Lord gives an answer which was in fact offensive. It should have put off this woman because the Lord told her what is meant for the children should not be given to the dogs. Jews thought of the Gentiles as dogs, unclean dogs. The Lord said those words, but the woman did out with the Lord. 
people have a like the samaritan woman she was so focused on what she wanted and nothing can discourage her learn from her lord's words could not put her off or discourage her she persisted and she turned the lord's own words to her advantage and said oh you are right but don't you know the house dogs get the crumbs that fall from the children's table am i right how clever she is how clever she 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 is taking the lord's own words to her advantage so the children they oh the children their table but the crumbs will keep on falling the children but the dogs will get the crumbs the scraps oh for me give me the scraps i am just a dog i don't deserve it but give me the scraps the crumbs that will do for me that is the greatness of this woman's faith nothing can put her off nothing can discourage her now think about our faith my dear friends these days people are easily offended easily offended a snowflake generation and a cancellation culture everybody is easily offended no skin no skin so thin put on some skin put on some thick skin be strong like this woman you are easily offended oh anything can offend these days i'm told some some people don't go to church because the music is not good enough or the homily is not good enough the priest is not good so you can you are easily discouraged what are we here for we are very easily offended discouraged we are looking for some, what are we looking for here like this woman be focused you should know what we are we should know what we are here for be focused and this woman again she is not put away put off by anything dear friends when your prayer is not answered what is your response to god when you pray and cry light to a candle so for masses are doing all that your prayer is not answered how do you respond to god respond to god's silence are you put off easily then tell yourself your faith means nothing that is a truth if god is like a vending machine if that's how you think of god a vending machine you go there you pray there and doesn't come you are disappointed oh god's silence means so much god's silence doesn't mean his absence god's silence only means he is waiting for the right time here by god's silence the woman was tested challenged and she didn't give up the same way you and me in our life our faith will be tested and challenged to see how strong is your faith for the last prophet to john the baptist 400 years of god's silence think about it when the last prophet john the baptist 400 years of god's long long silence nothing in between then jesus god gives silence to prepare you for something or whatever he is planning to do so hang on in there don't run away don't give up your faith don't give up your church 
Hold on there. God silence means not his absence, but his purpose. The same with Abraham. He was given a wonderful promise, great promise. And he believed. But years, years, years passed by before God's promise came to fruition. So when God is silent in your life, when your prayer is not answered, life goes the wrong way, everything is disappointing, and don't give up your faith, just hang on in there. Lord is taking his time, his good time, he will come at the right time. Let us learn from this woman a great faith, a faith that was so strong, nothing could put her off. In all circumstances of life, in good and bad, in sad and disappointing, in all circumstances, hold on to your faith. Trust in the Lord. The Lord will come at the right time. And a prayer, my prayer, will be answered at this time for his purpose.